Welcome to the last example for Chapter 4 from OpenStax College Physics, although we will see plenty of more force problems in Chapter 5. This example is the longest of the hanging rope examples from lecture. We had several that showed up within the lecture video itself, and this one got its own standalone video so that we can kind of see the process in action and discuss some of the slightly more complex algebra that comes from having two different angles when we're dealing with two unknown tensions. As always, though, in Chapter 4, not only do we want the real image or real situation, and that's what's included here, also given to us on our slide, but we also want to draw the free body diagram. Now I'm going to draw it in both places, the different components, so that we can really see the difference um, and see where our sine and cosine are coming from. So first of all, this rope 2 is pulling away from this 50 kilogram block, so its vertical component is pointing up. It is pulling away from that block. And same for this one here as well. This is going to be T2Y, because it was rope 2, the Y component. And this is T1Y. This is rope 1 and the Y component. And then the same idea of pulling away from the block. We are going to have an arrow pointing to the right for T2X, and an arrow pointing to the left for T1X. The last thing that we have that we need to include, of course, is gravity. So the reason why a free body diagram is so important to us is because it can really make sure that we have only the pieces that we need and none of the rest of the picture. Sometimes it's fine to just draw the force problem like this on the picture itself, and that can be all you need. The free body diagram tries to take away any excess detail so that we're only looking at the forces. So T2 here and T1. Then we have the components we just talked about. So T2Y. T1y, while I still have the blue color out, I'll have gravity. Notice that we're given kilograms, so that is going to be mass and not weight. So we should do 50 times 9.8, which will give us 490 newtons. Now when we switch to the x components, this is T1x and this is T2x. The Angles themselves, this is over here, the 20 degrees, so this will be cosine, this will be sine, and here the 60 degrees. This will be cosine, the x component, and sine, the y component. All right, so we have our drawing, and now we can recognize that we're going to have to write down two separate equations. There's no way around that. So um, first of all, I'm going to erase this arrow just because it's kind of in the way of my problem solving. So if we look at the y component for first, the key thing about these hanging rope problems is that the acceleration is zero meters per second squared in both directions. So if we also write down f dot x equals m a x, the acceleration in that direction is also zero. So we have that the net forces in the y direction add up to zero, and we also have that the net forces in the x direction add up to zero also. This is key to our hanging rope problems where the block itself is not moving and not accelerating. All right, so if we look at our free body diagram, as always, the free body diagram is the map of the situation. We have T1y plus T2y, same direction, same sign minus gravity, opposite direction, opposite sign. We also have that T2x minus T1x equals zero. Opposite direction, opposite sign. We could have just as reasonably written T1x minus T2x. The only key thing here is that the opposite direction arrows have opposite signs from each other. 
Because they equal zero, we can choose either direction to be positive. All right, so what we will see is once we start to write the sine and cosine components, so T1y, if we look at where it is, it would be our unknown T1 times the sine of 60 degrees. Whether you drew a force diagram like the left or the free body diagram like the right, we are talking about the side that is as far away opposite the angle as possible, sine. For T2y, we have T2 sine 20 degrees. And then gravity, we can write the 490 that we solved for in the free body diagram. You'll notice that we have two unknowns, so we have to pause there. All right, T2x is T2 cosine 20 degrees. You'll notice in both pictures, it's the adjacent side that we're talking about, minus T1 cosine 60 degrees and that equals zero. In problems that you see on the homeworks and the test, it's not always going to be the case that cosine are the x and sine are the y. Sometimes the angle given will be relative to the wall in a way that makes the sine and cosine components opposite of what we might start getting used to. Always, always just focus on what is adjacent and what is opposite and use what your picture tells you. Don't ever assume sine must be y and cosine must be x because that is not always the case. All right, so we need to solve one of these equations for one of the unknowns. This is yet again a system of equations detail, but it is one where we can't easily just add the two equations together like we've been doing when there's a single tension and two ends of the same rope. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for T2. I'm going to add this term to both sides. So we have T2 cosine 20 degrees equals T1 cosine 60 degrees. If we divide both sides by cosine 20 degrees, running out of space, we get T2 all by itself. So we get T2 and then cosine 60 degrees over cosine 20 degrees, that's a lot to have to write down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug when I'm about to circle in purple. I'm going to plug that into my calculator, and it's going to show up right here. And really the reason we did this was just to save ourselves from having to write out more stuff over and over again. And all of that is attached to T1 still. All right, so T2 is 0.532 times T1. We can now use this and put it into this equation here. So we'll keep T1, T1 sine 60 degrees plus, and I'm going to put it in parentheses so that we can really see what happens, sine 20 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and add 490 to both sides. So it's on the other side. All right, and I'm even going to use the other color just so that we see where it came from. Instead of T2, instead of T2, I'm writing this out instead, 0.532T1. All right, I'm going to scroll our view down a bit to give myself a lot more room than what I currently have. All right, so back to the algebra here. The plugging in of this solved for unknown into the second equation is absolutely key to the system of equations part. If in your homework you get to this equation and this one, so I'm going to circle these two, that's really where the physics kind of ends and the algebra part takes over. We do want to make sure that we can handle this algebra, but if you get to this step confidently and it's the rest of the problem that you struggle with, then kind of pat yourself on the back that you have worked out the key new physics skills that we're trying to build in this um, 
in this semester, and it's okay if you need to practice a couple more times to get a little bit more comfortable with solving the system of equations. We solve for one unknown and we plug it in. For this first term, we can plug sine 60 degrees into our calculator and we will get 0.866 and then the T1 is still here. So that's the first term. And then plus, I'm going to plug sine 20 degrees times 0.532 into my calculator. Those are both the things that are attached to T1. And I'm going to get 0 0.182 times T1. All right, all of that equals 490. The reason I've rewritten it like this is for a lot of students, this previous step looks really unfamiliar. And so I want to make sure we recognize that this is really just at this point. We did the hard algebra already. At this point, it's just a matter of 2x plus 3x kind of algebra. So we can add these two pieces together because that's the total amount of T1 that we have. So 0.182 plus 0.866. So we get 1.048 T1 equals 490. So if we divide both sides by 1.048, And we'll get T1 by itself. And so T1 is equal to 468 when we round, 468 newtons. Now the final step in the um, system of equations part is to take the solved unknown and plug it back into where we left off. So T2 is equal to 0.532 times 468, and so T2 is equal to 249 newtons, and we've completed the problem. Note that in order to have a sense of if these are too big or too small, really we just need to compare to the um, force of gravity. If there was a single rope holding this just vertically attached to the wall, then the, that single rope would have 490 newtons attached to it. These are both in a similar ballpark and they're ha sharing the load, although at angles. And so it is reasonable that these are both in the hundreds of newtons based on how big this block is that we're trying to hold up. So this is the last example from chapter four and it's the only standalone example that we have of the hanging rope problems but we will see plenty of more force examples in chapter five after the lecture videos for it. And so I will see you in that new set of videos next week.